Father, we worship you. Thank you, Jesus. We are welcome in this place, O oh God. We acknowledge your presence. Be glorified. Be lifted high. We worship you. Thank you, Jesus. You are good. Surrounded by 
living sacrifice unto you. The Lord, you will move without hindrances. Only you will be glorified. Spirit of the living God, O Holy Spirit, move unhindered. Take absolute control and minister life to your people. Bring the word of God with clarity, with simplicity, and with power in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. And I add that I will not speak what you will not want the people to hear. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father and our God. In Jesus' name, we pray. And the saints of God will say, Praise the Lord. Again, we want to conclude where we started last Wednesday. To be strong. What did I say? Be strong. Hallelujah. So let's take our text from the book of Psalms. Psalm 46, I read verse 1 through to 11. Psalm 46, 1 through to 11. God is our refuge. Not was, not to obey. But God is our refuge. And strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried in the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swellings thereof, there is a river, the stream wherefore shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. And that right earlier. The hidden rage, the kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. 
Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he had made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, cut the spear in sunder. He burned the chariot in the fire. Be still. How can I be still when there is trouble? And know that I'm God. I will be exalted among the hidden. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Let's take that last verse together again. One to go. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to be assured that God is, a, is fully aware of everything and anything going on around the world. Can I tell you the honest truth? Nothing has taken him unawares. And that's why God wants you to be what? Strong. He sees and knows. Look at what the Bible says in the book of 2 Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 9. 2 Chronicles 16 and verse 9. It says, For the eyes of the Lord does what? Run to and fro throughout the whole earth. What is he doing? To show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect towards what? Him. Hallelujah. I pray we will not do any foolish thing in this season in the name of Jesus Christ. He said, when we do foolish things, there will be war. May we escape this war in the name of Jesus. This war that comes by choice, by doing things, behaving as if there is no God. It is the eye of the Lord that is permitted to run to and fro. He has a mission. That when he sees that your heart is trusting only in him, he will show himself strong on your behalf. But you know what we are doing? We are playing God. We are running to and fro. We are having sleepless night. Permutating doing all the things and the combinations we're going to do to be strong. No. Allow the eye of God to be what? To be strong. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. God also, I, like the scripture said, want to show himself strong against whatever comes your way, against whatever is happening in your life. Remember that he's on your side. And I want you to remember from what we said last Wednesday. That you are carrying something inside. It says, for the greater one is where? It's in you. The greater one is in you. That one, no matter what comes your way, the greater one is you. You know, but the, the truth of whatever is going on and what will happen after this is actually what we do with the word of God. Let me repeat it. Whatever, what you do with the word of God is the determinant factor of whatever will happen to you or the outcome of your life, whether there is corona or after corona. And that is why this corona shouldn't shake us. If we are grounded in the word of God, look at it. Psalm 119 verse 165. Psalm 119 and verse 165. It says, Great peace have they We do what? Who are in love with your law. And what it says, two things. Nothing shall rattle them. Nothing will offend them. Things are offending. The circumstances, many people are angry, you agree with me? Things are not going the way they want. The only reason we take offense is because we don't have peace. So, but it says, great peace have they that love the law. It says, nothing shall by any means do what? Offend them. And you're, like I said, many people are offended. Look at what the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1 to 3. I'm telling you what you do with the word of God. So if you love the word of God, nothing will offend you. He said, all this commandment I have commanded thee this day, that you shall observe to do, that you may do what? Live and do what? There's no, there's no shortcut. And go in. And do what? For you to go in, that means the doors will be open. The gates will be open. Say, and go in and do what? Possess the Lord. 
the land with the Lord by oaths. He swore. The Bible says he could swear by no greater. He swore by himself that every promise of God is yea and amen in Christ. It cannot fall to the ground. None of his word will return void. There is no one promise of God that will fail. He said, For which he swore unto your fathers, verse 2. And you will remember all the way with the Lord that God had led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. To do what? To humble you. To do what? To prove you. You know, some things are proving us as a church, but let's leave that for another time. And to know what is in your heart, whether you will keep his word, commandment or not. Whether you will cut corners, whether you will still be steadfast in paying your tithe in your offering, now that everywhere is closed. Nobody is seeing you. That's what they, He's just proving your heart to see your commitment to him, to see whether you are faithful, whether you can study the Bible on your own, to pray on your own without having to hire those your prayer contractors. Now you are socially distancing from them. Are you surviving? The Lord will help you. Amen. Verse 3 says, And he humbled thee and suffered so thee to do what? To hunger. He fed thee with manna which you do not know. Even your fathers did not know. That he might make you know that man does not live by bread alone. But you are going to live by every word that does what? Proceed. That means you must constantly be hearing God. It's not what you had yesterday, yes. But what is, what is proceeding? What is God saying to you? Like today, the Lord is saying to you, be what? Be strong. He says, out of the mouth of the Lord does what? You will live. You are going to live and be victorious only by the word of God. Heaven and, Mark 13, 13 says, heaven and earth, Mark 13, 31, he says, heaven and earth will pass away my word will not do what? Pass away. Let's go. We have put aside the word of God, but look at the word the Bible says. John 15, 17. In John 15, 17, you know what I'm telling you? What you are doing with the word of God. He said, John 15, 7, sorry. John 15, 7. It says, if you abide in me and my words Abide what? In you. you are holding on to it. You will ask what you will. And what happened? It shall, because of what? The word is resident in you. If you don't have the word, what are you going to ask? He said, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will. It is guaranteed. That's what I'm saying. Whatever you do with the word of God is very, very important. If you look at it, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 14. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 14. I have written unto you fathers because you have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you young men because you are strong. And what? The word of God abided in you. You are going to be strong because what? The word of God is... Is abiding in you. The psalmist said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I will not sin against you. He said, Because the word abided in you, you have overcome what? The wicked. What can you do outside the word? That's why men are falling. That's why men are giving way. That's why, that's why people are not strong. And like I, I will say to you, he said, If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is what? Strong. It's more. And if your strength is more, it's because you have not eaten. And because you've not eaten the word of God, you, are not, you have not been feeding your spirit man with the word of God. That's, you see, the word of God is tried as if it has gone through this furnace seven times. It doesn't fail. This is a, a time for you to trust God. Search the scripture. In this time where men are saying there is a, a, a falling or a casting down, you'll be saying what? There is a lifting. The only reason you can say that is the word of God in you. Hallelujah. Amen? So get ready for what? You need to be strong and understand this. If you look at it, Psalm 1, from verse 1 to 3. 
the word of God. He said, blessed is the man who will not walk in the counsel of what? Who is your counselor this season? They will tell you that scripture you know, Matthias chapter 3 verse 5. If you can't beat them, it's in your Bible, check it. Not my own anywhere. He said, do not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. The temptation to cut corners will be here. We are entering some seasons and only God will help us. No standard in the way of sinners and does not sit in the seat of what? The scornful. But look at what happens to the person. But his love, his delight is what? In the, word of, in the law of the Lord. The principles of God. They are principles to do everything in life. And in his law, does he do what? Meditate day and night. It's not living by WhatsApp, by chat, by all those things that you just keep to. You know, it is what are you meditating? Is it the word of God? Hallelujah. So, what are you feeding your spirit man with? He said, he said it's not, look at how the person will be. He said, the person shall be like a, a tree, what? Planted by the rivers of water. Remember, there's something we, we read in the psalm we read. Just hold on there. Let me just read from here. Just hold on to the screen there. It says in Psalm 46, verse 4, it says, there is a river, the stream whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. It says, it shall be like a tree planted by the what? rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not do what? Wither. Help me. And whatsoever, whatsoever he doeth, shall do what? Prosper. Because of what? The word of God. Joshua won it. Joshua won it. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart where? Out of your mouth. But you shall meditate during and night. Remember the psalmist. That you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make what? Thy way prosperous. And you shall have what? Good success. God will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. If you look at Romans chapter 3 verse 1 to 3. Romans 3, 1 to 3. Romans chapter 3, verse 1. He said, what advantage do you have as a believer? Or what profit is there in circumcision? What is the profit of your, of your covenant with Jehovah? You know the sign of covenant is circumcision. I mean, what advantage is in being a believer in Christ? Look at what he says in verse 2. Much where? Everywhere. Chiefly. Because we have what God is saying. That's what it means. Because unto us is committed. We are, we are aware of what God is saying. So if a believer is not aware of what God is saying in this season, beloved, the person is in trouble. He's in what? Serious trouble. You will run helter skater. But that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Verse 3 says something. For if some did not believe, Will their unbelief make the faith of God of none effect? No. You have God, the word of God, and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So let's look at a few things. When I look at it, I say, so what makes us strong? Can I tell you? The only thing we learned last Wednesday is what we are carrying. And I'm pushing forward to say it is the very presence of God in our lives. Look at it. That's Psalm 46 from verse 1. It says, God is our refuge. Strength and very present help. Where? In trouble. He said, because of that, we will not do what? Fear. He said, though the earth be removed, we are seeing things that are uncommon. He says, and the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea. He said, the waters do rear off and be troubled. Though the mountains shake with the swellings 
thereof. It looks like, like I've said, there is trouble, confusion, convulsion, everything is scattered, nothing is working, you can't predict anything. You go to market today, the same one price by the time you return tomorrow, the price, your budget is thrown out of balance. Your connections are failing you. Access is being denied like it's a computer. Things are not working the way they ought to be. The way you know them, the plans you've gathered for this year, it's not working as planned. It looks like there is trouble. But look at what it says. Verse 4. He said, there is a river. The streams wherefore shall make glad the city of God. The holy place of the tabernacle of the Messiah. Look at what he says. God. You see, God in any matter changes the question. It changes the narrative. Everywhere you find him, it changes the narrative. Allow him tonight to change the narrative of your life. Hallelujah. He has never failed anyone, and beloved, he will not fail you. He said, God, that's the factor. The God we serve. God is in the midst of what? Her. Because of the presence of God, what will happen? She shall not be what? Moved. I'm praying for grace that you will be unmovable. No matter what the enemy is throwing at you, you will be standing firm because you are carrying the presence of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. You see, let's look at a few things. The presence of God makes a difference in our life. Let's look at it together. In Isaiah 43, Isaiah 43. I want to read from verse 1. Isaiah 43. I want to read from verse 1 through to 5. It says... But, thus said, but now, thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called you by what? And what? You are his. He said, when, I wish I said if, when, get ready, it's, 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 except you're not a child of God. When you pass through the waters, what is he saying? My presence will be with you. And through the rivers, what will happen? It shall overflow you. When you walk through fire, it will not be born. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. For the sake of time, let's go to verse 5. No, okay, let's understand everything. Verse 3 says, And the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior, I gave it you for your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Because you are precious in my sight, you have been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore, what will happen? I will give men in exchange. The Bible says when trouble is coming, it's not me that wrote the Bible. It says it will take the righteous away and put the wicked. So when trouble is coming, it's, it, you can sorry, I remember once traveling, and the driver was running. I said, sorry. I feel sorry for you. If anything happens in this car, I'm going coming out on scratch. Not even my button will remove. But you, you may have gone for it. It is not, you see, when God says he loved you, take that very serious. It is not a school boyfriend and girlfriend love. It's not even a husband and wife love. It is love as strong as what? Death. Hallelujah. So look at it. It says, in verse 5, fear not. Why? It says, for, <laughs> it is I'm with you. It says, for I am with you. 
I told you the rental brothers that were caught in the storm. And the place became darkened, and the young one was just jumping in front, enjoying himself. His elder brother, who has the knowledge of everything, was just wondering, okay, so that my brother doesn't think uh, he wanted to play the snow brother and kept following. At a point, the storm was too much. He didn't want to sell out. He asked his uh, young, why are you so confident? And he said, you are with me. He said, for I am with you. You know those days when we go to the farm, when you just pick your cutlass and put it here, there is nothing, nothing to fear on the road. Or you carry your stick, whether it's snake or not, you are going to kill. So you are confident because of what you have. But this time it's not what you have. It's a function of who is with you. So he said, fear not. I am what? With thee. That's a promise. If you, go to, if you go back to Isaiah 41 verse 10, look at how it put it. He said, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For what? I am your God. The question is, you must settle this thing. Is he with you? Mm -mm -mm. Or has he left you? Do you remember your brother Samson? When God was with him. Every time the, the lion roared at him, they crushed the lion. Every, they, they locked him up, tied him. He got up at night, pulled the city gate. The reason was God was with him. But when God left him, you can tell the story. The Lord will help us. Amen. So look at it. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4 and 5. God's present. Go to the next verse. It says, let your conversation be without covetousness. Don't manipulate people. Don't do what? Manipulate people. Don't cut corners. Say, be content with such as you have. For he has said. Why will you do that? It's because God has made a vow that he won't leave you. He won't forsake you. But I know that circumstances around you may be saying something. The Bible says, let every man be a liar. God is what? True. Your circumstance could be speaking falsehood. You know, Satan has a way of manufacturing false evidence. When the children of Jacob sold their brother to slavery, you know they didn't tell him, wild animals kill your son. They just showed him his cloth, soaked in blood, and said, is this your son's cloth? You know, he's the one who said, wild animals have killed him. Go and read your Bible. They didn't say, they didn't say their brother was dead. It was the man who assumed. Because false evidence was presented to him, and he believed a lie. And many of us believe lies. God will help us in Jesus' name. That's why you believe lies. So look at what the psalmist says in Psalm 23 verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why reason? I am confident what? You are with me. He is with me. So my duty and my responsibility is to be convinced, be rest assured, not practice God's presence. Like they tell you, leave that. I won't talk about that today. But that God is what? With you. Is he with you? Or has he left like... Sam, the Bible says, Samson did not know that the Spirit of God has left him. And so he got up one day and did like, no, no, no. It's not routine. I pray God will help you and me in Jesus' name. Look at what Isaiah 8.10 said. Isaiah 8.10. Say, take counsel together. 
Why? It shall come to what? Not. Let them be planning. I don't know what they plan to do with your life, but it's, it's a waste of time once God is with you. He said, take counsel together, it shall come to know. Speak the word. It shall not do what? Stand. Why? Amen. The Lord is your strength. <laughs> Somebody is saying, Avani Konda. <laughs> it is well with us in Jesus' name. The Lord will help us mightily in the name of Jesus Christ. You see, when you know that God is with you, it brings confidence. Look at it. Second Chronicles chapter 32, verse 7 to 8. There was, there was trouble in that city. But when they had this word, he said, be strong and what? Courageous. Be not afraid, nor dismayed, for the king of Assyria, whatever is thrown at you, nor all his multitude that is with him, for there be more with us than with him. Look at what he says. With him is his earthly connections. Whether they are in any form, whether they are in government or not in government, or whether they are in court or they are not in court, whether they are connected. He said, but with us. Who? Is the Lord our God. Say, the Lord is with me. You know, Jeremiah said, the Lord with me is like a mighty and terrible one. And the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Look at what happened in Exodus chapter 33 from verse 13. Moses understood this, that the presence of God makes a whole lot of difference. He said, now therefore I pray you, if I found grace in your sight, show me now the way, that way that I may know thee, and that I might find grace in thy sight. Consider that this nation is your people. Look at it, the next verse. It says, it says my, my what? My presence <laughs> shall do what? Go with thee. And who will it bring to you? Rest. We run helter skelter. I remember that psalm that we said in Psalm 45, 40, I mean, verse 6, verse 5. It says, God is in the midst of her. Nothing will move her. He said, the he said, God is in the midst of her. She shall not what? Be moved. God is right. He dare to help you. And he will not be late in the name of Jesus. Go back to that scripture. He said, my presence will go with you. Come back to that verse 14. He said, my presence shall go with you. And what will happen? You will be at rest. You know, when people are, are shaking and panicking, mm, it looks like you don't care. Because why? You know and understand that the presence of God is with you. Let's go to the next verse. And he said unto you, if your presence go not with me, I'm not going anywhere. If your presence is not going with me, I'm not going anywhere. Next verse. He said, where will people know that I and your people have found grace in their sight? Is it not because you are going with us? The presence of God separates us from everybody. It is a distinguishing mark. That's why I say, a thousand will fall at your right hand, ten thousand at your right hand. It will not do what? It will not come near you. Because why? The presence of God is there. That's why I started that scripture. I say, he that dwelleth in the secret place of God. That means the person is what? In the presence of God. Are you in the presence of God? I pray the Lord will give us understanding. Let's look at a few things. Remember Gideon, Judges, if you have time, read Judges chapter 6, 1 to the end. But let's look at verse 12 and verse 16. Judges chapter 6, verse 12. And the angel appeared unto him and said unto him, what did he say with Gideon? The Lord is with thee. That's why I can call you what? A mighty man of valor. If you go to verse 16, you know the, the story. And the Lord said to him, surely I will be what? With thee. And victory is certain. 
the presence of God brings victory and strength in the name of Jesus. Joshua 1 9. Joshua 1 9. Joshua 1 9. Joshua chapter 1 verse. Say, have it say command. Say, have I not commanded you? Be strong and be of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be dismayed. Why? For the Lord your God is with you everywhere what you are going. So don't go to where God will not follow you to. Amen. He is with us. Every say, God is going with anywhere I'm going to at any time. T. He is what? With me. So why am I afraid? Remember what he told the promise he made in Isaiah 43? When he said, where you pass through the fire. If you remember the Hebrew boys, if you have time, read it. Daniel chapter 3, 8 to 26. But look at what happened in verse 25. The, the king has gotten angry and threw them into the fiery furnace. The fire consumed those who were bringing them in. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men, four men loose walking in the midst of fire. They have no heart. And the, fort of the, form, the form of the fourth man it's like what? What kept them? The presence of God. God was with them. And I'm praying that the Lord will be with you from today. I said the Lord will be with you from today. Wherever you are, the Lord will be with you. Don't fear. And the Lord will help you mightily in Jesus' name. Look at, what you, look at it. John 14, 17 to 23. Let's go ahead so that we'll just pray. He said, even the spirit whom the world cannot receive because he seeth him not, neither know him, but you know him. For what? He dwelleth with you and shall be in you. It makes a whole lot of difference, the presence of God in your life. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Jesus said, I'm, I will have come coming to you. So if somebody is coming to you, what do you do? As I mean, take for example, the pastor says, I'm coming to visit you. And you know your house is dirty. What do you do? Uh -huh. you, will clean, you will clean it out. You will welcome him. You will prepare for him. Jesus said, I'm coming to you. Yet a little while, the world will see me no more. They may not be seeing me, but you, you are seeing me. Because I live. You will do what? You will also live. And that day you shall know that I am what? In my father. And you are where? And I'm where? In you. The presence of God. You're enveloped. He is in me. He's in you. It's not a feeling. It's a believing. And then he is in me. Then leave it out. Say, he that had my commandment and keep them, he see that loveth me, and he that loveth me shall be love of my father. I will love him. And do what? I will manifest myself to him. The next verse. Jesus, Judas said to him, not Iscariot, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself unto us, not unto the world? The next verse. Jesus answered and said, if a man love me, he will keep what? The words again. My father will do what? Love him. We will come unto him and our dress will be him. Where can we find God? They can point at you. You think it's not possible? And if God is with you, where will sickness be? If the spirit of God is in you, the one that heals sickness is in, where will sickness be? Where will fear be? Where will affliction be? It cannot be. Let's come to terms. Let's meditate on this word. Let's, carry, let's, let's make real the presence of God in our lives. Let's make him our habitation. I know our time is fast spent, so we're going to pray. The only reason we're going to be strong is if, the, if we carry the presence of God, which I know you carry. Can you feel your brain? Shake your head and see if you can feel it. You cannot. 
What is it there? How do you know? Because the biology teacher told you and you believed it. And so I'm now telling you that God is in you. Can you say God is in me? Uh -huh. If he's in you, he needs to manifest himself. So you are going to pray. But you know, like I said, he's a holy God. What will he find in your home, in your sanctuary? Jesus said, the prince of this world coming, he has nothing in me. Does the master, is there anything in you that can keep him away? Is there anything that keeps, that will drive away the presence of God? Sin is a sinker. If you've never allowed Jesus to come into your life, he's saying to you, behold, I stand at the door of your heart this evening and I'm knocking. Let me in. You might be a believer, but like Samson, the spirit of God has left you and no one carrying the presence of God. But you may be a child of God and you are carrying the presence. You have never known it. You've never tested it. It's time to pray. You need to cry out and say, Lord, mark my life with your presence. Lord, mark my life with your presence. Let's pray. Let's talk to the Lord. God, let me be a carrier of your presence. And if you carry the presence of God, you know it's what, what evokes it is the praise of God. Let it burst forth. He said, though the mountains may shake, everything could be shaken. He said, but there is a river that will make glad the city of God. God is in the midst of her. Can you enthrone Jehovah in the throne of your life and say, Lord, mark my life with your presence. Mark my life with your presence. Lord, mark my life with your very presence. In the name of Jesus, I'd like you to pray. It's not a thing of grabbing. You don't grab it. Settle it with God and say, Lord, prepare me a sanctuary, pure and holy, found to be true. I'll be a living sanctuary for you today. Lord, let me be a living sanctuary carrying your presence. Let me be a living sanctuary carrying the very presence of God. Lord, I know you are with me. Forgive me if I believed in a lie. I have believed the false reports, the sentiments, the superstitions of the world. Lord, let me be from today. From today, today be a carrier of your presence. Lord, you say you are with me. Yes, I agree with you. I come in agreement with you that you are with me. But let my, Lord, mark my life with your presence. Lord, let my life be marked with your presence. I'm not asking for silver and gold. It's yours. I'm asking that, Lord, I carry your presence. Lord, let me 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 be a carrier of your presence. Lord, let me be a carrier of your presence. Lord, let me be. Mark my life. Thank you, Father. Makaporo zendere mo shakababa. Lord, grant us the real understanding of what you are saying today. It's not in struggle, but in reality that we are carrying your very presence. Help us to manifest this presence. Now that you are carrying the presence of God, I'd like you to say, Lord, let there be a manifestation of your presence in my life. Let your life begin, let your presence begin to manifest. Lord, let your presence begin to manifest. Lord, let your presence begin to manifest. Lord, hey, ceaselessly let your presence begin to manifest. God, 
mampo kutolobo shakababa. Lord, in gotune lemosha, Father, let me be a carrier of your presence. And as I carry your presence, Lord, let it begin to manifest. Let it begin to manifest. Let it begin to manifest. Even from this moment, in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we agree in prayer today. With everyone listening or we listen. That God, today, we will begin to manifest your presence. Your presence will overtake our life. And we will pray from that today in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, our Father and our God. To you alone be all the praise and glory. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. The grace together.